welcome to the webinar and um, we are delighted to have all of you here today at this important event dedicated to the protection of our cultural heritage. I'm Katerina Boychenko and I'm researcher representative of web to learn team from Ukraine and I'll moderate today our meeting. So I will share my screen and begin our little presentation for introduction of our project, which helped us to, uh, to be here together with you today. So uh, the webinar aims to explore and discuss digital tools and community efforts in the field of higher education for the protection and preservation of Ukrainian culture heritage, which is currently under threat. Our webinar is hosted and organized by web to learn for the Agile project, Higher Education Resilience in Refugee, uh, Refugee Crisis, Forging Social Inclusion Through Capacity, Building Civic Engagement and Skills Recognition. And I would like to sincerely thank to the co-organizers of this webinar on behalf of the esteemed web to learn team. Katerina Juru and Stefania Oikonomou for the opportunity to be the moderator of this webinar. To start, I would like to tell you a few words about the Agile project. The overall goal of our Agile project is to increase the resilience of uh, uh, inclusive higher education institutions in addressing the current needs of refugees through their social participation and skills recognition in their educational pathways. To achieve this over, uh, overarching goal, uh, we have formulated several specific objectives. And uh, uh, through our efforts and collaboration with our partners, we hope to achieve these specific objectives and uh, continue to uh, the sustainable integration of refugees into our higher education institutions and society at large. You might ask, who are your partners? And in our Agile project, we have the honor of collaborating with distinguished partners from various U European countries. Our partners are recognized leaders in the field of, um, sorry, in the field of higher education, research, and social innovation development. Uh, together, these partners uh, form an international alliance that works together to achieve our goals in the Agile project. And we are grateful for their support and collaboration, which will help us achieve the sustainable integration of refugees into higher education and society. I also have uh, the honor uh, of introducing our invited speakers. Olha Birova a recognized expert in the field of history, focusing on the study of the history of Ukraine and the Sloboda region. She's actively involved in the preservation of historical and cultural heritage sites and uh, the integration of digital technologies in the museum sphere. Ihar Kovalishin, expert in historical digitalization and immersive technologies, founder of Echo Garden and uh, CEO at Chameleon Age the first Ukrainian startup in Europe in the field of smart historical AR reconstruction. And uh, Darina Zhevogladova, uh, being a recent philosophy doctor fellow of Ukrainian University, Kyiv University and uh, the University of Technology, Sydney, Darina was previously responsible for international cultural cooperation at Ukrainian Culture Foundation. Creative Europe Desk Ukraine, as well as involved in UNFPA humanitarian response of YAF. Uh, so uh, we have introduced ourselves to you, and now I would like to get uh, to know each of you better. To do this, we suggest following the link you can find in the chat. Uh, and you will direct it uh, to a virtual board with images of cultural landmarks of Ukraine. And there you can briefly introduce yourself. So please input your information in the sticker or copy the sticker and fill it out or create a new one. It's your choice and keep it very brief because we have one minute for, for doing this. Um, uh, I have a question. 
Yes. Uh, we will made it in English or in Ukrainian? Uh, it's better to do it in English. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, maybe, yes, we have a link in our chat. So, please uh, follow the link. And I will show you the full the full uh, picture, what we have. Oh, I see that people are starting to write the information. So you can click on your sticker and just uh, fill in your information. And it will be very interesting for us and for you to know each other better and to know who are with us today and how to create this uh, this board uh, you can click on the sticker on you can copy it and uh, just fill uh, your information oh okay. somebody somebody put the yes duplicate and uh, what good this one you can click on the sticker and uh, uh, write uh, your information. Or you can create a new one. Uh -huh. It's your choice, so. Uh -huh, okay, yes. <laughs> Just. I see that we have many people, not only from Ukraine and from European countries. It's a great pleasure to have you today with us. Okay, so while you are writing your information, maybe we will wait for one minute. And then you will see who are with us and we can see your names, your interests. So now that we've gotten uh, to know each other better, let's return to the Zoom, to our Zoom meeting. And we have prepared a few questions for you here. And we will give you uh, time after time it. And uh, it's interesting to know for us your opinion uh, when you answer this question. So uh, you can see uh, the question uh, on your screens. So please. Uh, Take a moment and uh, uh, choose your choose your answer. I see that we have different opinions, and I'll show you now. Uh, while we will wait for a second when more people will answer this question. Mm 
So I'll share the results with you. Uh, as we see, the majority of participants consider uh, the public support and education as the most effective, uh, the most effective method uh, for uh, protection our heritage. Okay, so. Uh, we have our first presentation speaker uh, and, oh, sorry. It is, uh, here is Olga Birova and uh, let's start uh, your presentation today. Uh, we know that uh, we have some uh, problems with connections. So uh, I'll try to uh, show your presentation. So. Olha Birova, uh, the floor is yours, please. Uh, thank you very much, Katerina. Uh, good morning. Um, the topic of my report um, is one of the research area of our department in Kharkiv State Academy of Culture. Uh, by the way, now we have a project with one of your partner. It's uh, Kaunas University of Technology in Lithuania. Uh, today, um, no international agreement or world organization guarantees the safety of monuments uh, during armed conflicts. Uh, these agreements exist only in theory. In real life, we see that no international documents of uh, UNESCO protection uh, status uh, can protect monuments from destruction. According to the statistic of the Ministry of Culture and uh, Information Policy, uh, please next uh, next one. Of Ukraine, as of uh, August uh, 2023, uh, 823 cultural heritage sites in Ukraine were affected by Russian aggression. Uh, you can see now uh, on the slide uh, how many monuments and, uh, and shared buildings and museum, um, we uh, lost it now. In this list dominate uh, architectural monuments and 252 objects. The largest number of destroyed objects uh, is in the uh, Halkov region, 207. And now after yesterday, we lost almost all buildings in the center from 19th century. Uh, in addition to monuments, uh, more than 10 museums and galleries were destroyed or damaged uh, in Ukraine. Uh, next one, please. Uh, the only way to preserve uh, architectural monuments and museums is to uh, digitalize uh, this object. Um, we cannot save it physically. Now it's impossible in our city. Um, uh, today, Ukraine uh, is um, implementing many of latest technologies in this area. Um, uh, next one, please. Uh, first of all, is the creation of uh, electronic catalogs uh, with 3D images, uh, photogrammetry in the way of production 3D models of an object uh, using calculation based on number of two-dimensional um, steel images. Uh, photogrammetry can be uh, useful in many ways. In the museum exhibition, a 3D model can uh, allow for showing uh, angles and uh, details uh, that were not uh, otherwise be exposed. Now as two centers who make this uh, project is Lviv and uh, Kyiv, it's our partner, and they use uh, two programs for create these models. Uh, next one, please. Uh, here are the necessary except for the work. A good camera mm, for photos. Mm, 
uh, enough pictures of the object to take from different uh, angles. A reasonably powerful computer that can do the calculation uh, required. A computer software that can uh, uh, internet and proceed the images into a 3D representation. Uh, 3D models can uh, be published on uh, Sketchfab or, or any other uh, website. Uh, next one, please. <clears throat> Uh, this is equipment uh, which we need um, uh, for create a 3D model. And uh, this is a link um, on Sketchfab where you can see um, our uh, project, uh, which we uh, created with our partners from uh, Lviv company, uh, Skyron. Uh, next one, please. Um, the museum are actively using augmented reality and which are reality technologies. Augmented reality in museum can be used in different ways. Uh, augmented reality in the form of uh, projection of hard uh, surface. Uh, second one, it's uh, marker technology. Uh, as marker, we can use QR code or it can be picture. Uh, our department has two projects with market reality. Uh, this is the creation of QR codes for architectural monuments, so which will be located near the buildings. The uh, QR code opens uh, an application with historical information about the object. Uh, second project uh, is the creation of uh, cards uh, with monument of art and uh, architecture and uh, an application where you can see the monuments and in 3D and listen to the historical information. Uh, now, a uh, uh, company in Kyiv created a monument which was destroyed. For example, the first church of Kyiv, uh, the Satina church. And they create a building and create a cards uh, where people can see its 3D model of this church. Um, marketless. Uh, a third um, a type of uh, this uh, reality is marketless technology. Uh, uh, this uh, type you, uh, we have is um, uh, audio guide. Uh, when you create audio guide in the center of the city, or, or we have it in uh, Ophishnia uh, Nature Reserve. Um, uh, next one, please. Uh, in the center, you can see the picture where the people and the uh, ship is augmented reality, um, which use um, hard surface. Uh, on the left hand, you can see the 3D model. Um, it's a um, market technology, which use um, cards or pictures as a marker. Um, <clears throat> augmented reality is created by the following shame. The camera of an AR device computer an image of a real object. The software of the device um, identif uh, identifies um, the obtained image, combines the real image with the augmented, and displays the final image of the visualization device. The visitor can see data about the author or history of the exhibits creation or a revived pictures. It's very important for that uh, building or monument which was destroyed and don't exist uh, uh, today. Uh, augmented reality can transmit not only images. Uh, next one slide, please. It can be sound. Uh, next one, please. Uh, other information that is broadcast uh, to the users. Um, broadcasters can be a smartphone or a table, tablets, uh, tablets. Uh, uh, next one, please. Um, which reality? Uh, which reality has um, um, <clears throat> uh, several types and uh, it's um, uh, unique with technology um which we can use in our museum it's in you for us uh, it's um, um we have only a first steps in the museum field um, when we use uh, virtual reality 
which reality is a simulated 3D environment that uh, enables users to explore and interact with the virtual surround in a way uh, that experimented the reality as it's uh, received uh, through the user's uh, sense. The environment is created with computer hardware and software. Other users might also need to wear uh, devices such as uh, helmets or, or goggles uh, to interact with the environment. The more deeply users can uh, immerse themselves in a VR environment and block out their physical surrounding, the more they uh, are able to suspend their belief and accept uh, it as real, even if it's fantastic uh, in nature. Uh, next one, please. <clears throat> uh, where a system can uh, significate uh, from one of the next, uh, depending on their purpose and the technology using, uh, although they generally fall into one of their following three uh, categories. Uh, first one is not immersive. Uh, non immersive, uh, this is type of uh, which reality, it's more easier, of course, and um, refers uh, to a 3D image simulator environment uh, that exists um, through a computer screen. Uh, the environment might also generate uh, sound uh, dependent on the program. Um, uh, now, uh, our company used uh, two pr programs uh, to create uh, virtual reality, and it's uh, very hard because um, um, it uh, has um, very many work uh, which creates this uh, environment, uh, especially with the fully immersive. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the users has uh, some control over the virtual environment using a keyboard, mouse, or other devices. But the environment does not directly interact with the user. A virtual museum is one of the examples of non-immersive uh, VR. This technology can also be used to create uh, virtual museums that uh, allow visitors to have 360-degree uh, views of the uh, premises. In Ukraine, last year, a project to create which are museums of the famous writer and philosopher Grigory Skovardam was uh, implemented. Uh, on the next slide, we will see this museum. It's very popular now when we create a, um, a virtual museum, since this technology is uh, non immersive. Um, virtual museums are popular in Ukraine. Um, and now we create a VR museum of uh, Hakov region. Uh, Semi-immersive. The type of uh, VR uh, offers a special uh, which uh, experience that exists uh, through a computer screen or some type of uh, glasses or headset. It focuses primarily on the visual 3D aspects of uh, virtual reality and does not uh, incorporate physical movement uh, in the way uh, that full immersion does. A common example of semi-immersive VR is a flight simulator, which is used by airplanes and militaries to train their pilots. Uh, full immersive, this type of VR develops the greatest level of which are reality. Uh, completely immersive, they either in uh, the simulated 3D world. It incorporates sight, sound, and in some cases, touch. Uh, there have even been uh, some experiment with the addition of uh, smell. Uh, users um, wear special equipment uh, such as helmet, um, goggles, or, or glowers, and uh, are able to fully interact with the environment. The environment might also incorporate such equipment as um, treadmills or stationary bicycle to provide users with the experience of movement uh, through the 3D space. Next one, please. Olga, uh, I'm sorry. Um, 
<laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, can you uh, give only one minute, minute speech? Speak? Oh, okay, it's time. Okay, okay. Yes, Next yes. one. Is, this is a military museum when we can see uh, 360 degree uh, views. And next one, please. And this is a full immersive reality. Uh, next one, please. Yes, and um, thank you for the opportunity to participate in this uh, signed event. Thank you, Pani Katerina, for your help with this presentation. Uh, thank you, Olha, for that insightful presentation. I'm sure the, uh, that our audience uh, uh, has questions. Uh, but uh, uh, we will uh, have our Q&A session after uh, all our speakers have finished. And uh, your esteemed, uh, our esteemed listeners, we have a question that uh, it will appear on uh, your screens now. So please uh, click on your answer and uh, we will see the results. Uh, which aspects of culture heritage protection do you think is most important? Katerina, can you share the results? Because uh, I can see it. Yes. So we can see that the major of our participants uh, think that preservation of historical memory um, is the most uh, is the most important aspect of cultural heritage protection. So let's go uh, to our ne next step. Yes. So uh, we have another interesting uh, presentation from Ihor Coalition. Uh, discussing innovative methods of immersive technologies in saving culture heritage. Ihor, we are eager to hear your thoughts. The floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Am I not Yes, and uh, I'll ask you for 10 minutes speech because mm. we are limiting in our time. Okay, thank you for such strong attention and position for this important question for our nation and all over the world. Uh, I can demonstrate my screen. Yes, you can share. You see? You see that? Uh, yes, we see your screen. We can see your screen. Okay. One minute. So. And hear me, yeah. Yes, we can hear you okay. very well. I can, I can start. <laughs> so uh, everyone know, and uh, that uh, cultural heritage and history very important, and it shaped us and our nation. And you, during today's events, uh, we realized uh, that uh, stronger. Chameleon Edge, it's a startup that uh, make historical authentic reconstruction. But uh, it's, uh, that's not uh, all our uh, today mission. What a problem. Uh, many, as uh, uh, we say, as uh, Olha say, that uh, many cultural heritage uh, fully destroyed and never be rebuilt. And in Ukraine, we have uh, more than 10,000 uh, castles, palaces, 
and church that uh, dis fully destroyed. So we, we have a uh, practical tool. We develop practical uh, uh, tool that you uh, not only can see how these monuments look like before, um, people uh, not only see, but uh, realize that it's very important and uh, such uh, monument that we will know how to uh, what we must to do um, what you must to do um, everyone must to do that uh, our culture our ukrainian culture our ukrainian history uh, we must uh, we must have a strong marketing position to all over the world that ukrainian history ukrainian culture is a part of uh, world culture. So uh, how our practical tool works. You visit a historical location or site, you have an um, uh, application, and uh, when you point your smartphone camera at ruined object, you see in real place, real time and real times how, how this site looked like before. But uh, you not only see a historical reconstruction monument, you can interact with object. It's uh, education for child. You have a very, very good um, graphic and you can work with this space in real sites or at home. You have a home version, you have a tablet, smartphone, you can download it, have a time portal and visit uh, the location uh, you can walk with personal 3d guide this uh, was uh, 3d guide uh, uh, took the information about this site and you can interact with object and it, it's not only you know, this uh, you can uh, make photo group photo not only you you can make a uh, group photo in this object, not on the phone ruin, background ruin, but uh, in a background, you can visit a location and make photo with this object. Uh, so it's very, as Oliha say, it's very, very uh, complicated work uh, that we have more than 15 uh, people in team. That's uh, researchers, designers, historical specialists, uh, because as I see, it's a not interactive tourism. It's a not a fun. Uh, it's a practical tool that cultural heritage we make a share all over the world and in Ukraine. It's a very uh, hard technology, but um, digitalization of cultural heritage is a very small part of this technology. Uh, so uh, I can show you how it. I can show you how this in practical, in real size. Чути мене так і видно? Так, все чудово чутно і звук комп'ютера. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Transkarpatia, Fus Castle, very uh, full reconstruction of the castle. You can visit this location, have a stand, have a QR code, download application, and walk through the, this historical location. It's a... Uh... I'm sorry. It's not computer graphic. Uh, in your smartphone, uh, uh, in your smartphone, uh, picture was uh, real. It's real. Uh, it's not render. It's not uh, an animation. It's uh, real, real uh, graphic. So uh, we have uh, such content. Uh, our company work. Uh, many years that we have a strong technology uh, now uh, oh, i'm sorry technical problems uh, can you hear me yes we can hear you uh, so now we uh, talk about our culture heritage russian ukrainian go but we don't have an instrument to restore this object because uh, our president our nation our ukrainian government work to infrastructure object but cultural heritage uh, it's uh, priority priority 
So we want to start the project that with, uh, with as Olha say, with heritage be rebuilt. And uh, it must be nas uh, no, our national project, not only our team, because it's very, very uh, big project. Our real case, it's a reconstruction of uh, Mykolaiv cultural heritage, uh, city of bronze uh, period in the territory of Ukraine. So as you realize, people in Mykolaiv don't know that they, they have a West location. People that live uh, more than 50, 100 years don't realize that uh, we have an object. Uh, we see the films about Troy, but in Ukraine we have a such uh, such cultural heritage. Uh, it's our real clients. You have a tablet and work location, and uh, you see in uh, this architectural uh, uh, ruins uh, how uh, people uh, live in three thousand three thousand years ago. As I say, we develop a uh, pocket time machine. In Lviv, we restore High Castle. Um, our first uh, king, uh, Karol Danilo, have a castle uh, that we, we foolishly be destroyed. But uh, you, it's not only architectural um, uh, reconstruction. As I say, you have uh, animation, you have uh, 3D guides, you can walk uh, in any object in this location. It's a, a Rio Poltva in center of Lviv and a low castle in Lviv. Uh, we can develop uh, not only Ukraine heritage, uh, Rome or Greek period. It's a Colosseum full reconstruction. And uh, it's a Olbia in Ukraine near Mykolaiv full, full reconstruction, Agora, like us Parthenon in Athens. So you can download our application we enjoy old places new impression chameleon edge as you see my screen i can show you our partners program you see yes yes we see but uh, we are uh, limited yeah I, I, one minute yeah one minute uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh technical okay. While you are sharing the screen, I want to. Yeah, add yeah, but uh, I uh, I have a notebook and uh, don't. I can't show I, you. I just want to add yes. that I think that not only our government and president should support uh, such projects, uh, and higher educational institutions should uh, should be involved in these projects and support them. Yeah, yeah. True. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Mark, Mark, Mark. So, uh, oh, uh, as all I say, we have partners in Kiev and we reconstruct the, the Satina chairs. And you can visit this location and physically see in real place of their destruction. It's not, uh, you can, you don't, uh, uh may, uh, any markers technology, any uh, books, any merch, uh, you just only visit in real place and at home for time portal. And uh, you can see our um, uh, reconstruction of castle in Lviv. Thank you so much, Igor, for your enlightening presentation. Yeah, uh, one moment, one, one moment. It's, uh, as I say, it's a reconstruction of High Castle, not only architectural, it's a very full reconstruction. So, um, uh, maybe I stop my demonstration and uh, say that um, we every uh, of us work with uh, have a business work with uh, such fields but i strongly recommend it uh, uh, consider uh, for forming the community work community ukrainian community and uh, not only uh, we develop five percent of project uh, our partners uh, digitalize uh, culture heritage we must be strong we must be uh, Yedeni, uh, I'm sorry, Unique, yes. my English yes. is Ukrainian, yes, uh, maybe united and uh, we must uh, work uh, together. Thank you for your attention. 
Thank you so much for such an inspiring presentation. Now I invite our participants uh, to respond to our next question. Uh, it will be very quickly, hope so. <laughs> Just a second, Katrina, please. We have pool three, yes. Which of the following methods do you think is uh, most promising for the restoration of damaged culture heritage? And of course, as we see a combination of all methods uh, as the most promising approach for the restoration of damaged culture heritage. Uh, this suggests a consensus that a holistic approach incorporating virtual reconstruction, traditional restoration methods, and the use of new materials and technologies, of course, may offer the best solution for preserving our culture heritage. Thank you so much. And we have, uh, moving on, uh, we have uh, Narina Zhivovladova discussing, discussing the current challenges of safeguarding Ukrainian culture heritage. Narina, please share your perspectives with us. <laughs> Yes. Hello, hello to everyone, and uh, thank you for uh, organizers for uh, having me here. And you know, I would like to start with a thought that um, I just just came with after after the uh, presentations of uh, Olga and Igor. Uh, I really thought how uh, the uh, universities, universities, communities. Uh, scientific educational communities how they became so uh so crucial in in uh, restoration of cultural heritage and in understanding uh this issue and uh proposing very uh practical tools on how to respond because we see it from from the from the uh, previous presentation about some concrete tools how you can preserve uh, the cultural heritage and how you can involve the scientific community and uh, now I would like, uh, we'll try also just to um, maybe conceptualize a bit the role uh, and current challenges of safeguarding uh, culture, Ukraine culture heritage. And, uh, you know, I would like to, um, I would like to start with the name of the project, which I was inspired of, about agile philosophy. And uh, indeed, uh, for, for me, I treat the uh, agile philosophy is the, flexible management uh, of uh, of cooperation where where a team uh, is able to uh, self-organize uh, for self-organization and uh, in this way the the, um, the, the the dynamic response for external and internal crises uh, is being uh, ensured and this is how I see the uh, educational and scientific community in Ukraine and around the world, uh, is uh, uh, this type of cooperation of this community during the uh, during the crisis and during the war, and uh, we all uh, we all know that the cultural heritage uh, of Ukraine became the target of of Russian uh, aggression, especially after the full scale invasion, and uh, the whole uh, democratic civilized world united uh, around the preservation of Ukrainian heritage. Uh, and uh, around the preservation of identity, which uh, which um, means the preservation of that cultural objects, cultural collections, and cultural sites uh, that we have in Ukraine. And I would like also today to tell more about uh, different projects uh, which unite the network form of cooperation of scientific and educational communities, and uh, because they 
play a key role in different, and they have different kind of functions, so kind of roles, from researching and uh, innovative conservation methods, uh, documenting at risk heritage, uh, developing uh, technologies, as we as we saw from the presentation for for the uh, culture heritage, training professionals in uh, emergency response, as well as which is also very important, raising awareness. Uh, in Ukraine and abroad for the uh, uniqueness and uh, necessity to preserve our heritage. And uh, here I would like to focus on just some of the examples uh, for uh, emergency. First one is the first function and role of the scientific and educational community is emergency response. And we can see the variety of the responses as for the refugees, as we see from this campaign, Agile, Agile project. Then also the uh, European Network of Culture Management and Policy, just after the full-scale invasion, they launched a donation campaign to help the students, especially who are involved in the heritage preservation. Next one, I would like to highlight the uh, Sutra project uh, that uh, also, by the way, won the uh, Europa Nostra uh, Heritage Prize uh, last year. And uh, the aim was to, it was the representatives at first for three universities, and then it gathered more than 1,500 uh, volunteers who worked on um, making the big data for the uh, websites of uh, Ukrainian museums, libraries, and other collections, so that to not uh, make them going offline. Because we understand also that the target uh, of uh, Russian invaders is also to um, our heritage and not only uh, not only physical object but also our memory. Uh, and uh, the uh, last project that I would like also to highlight it was a project that was quickly uh, developed by the uh, students of the Ukraine Catholic University called Safe Art Your Project, where the uh, also the team of volunteers they. Um, collect the information on destroyed heritage and place it on the interactive map so that also to um, to disseminate information about the destruction of culture heritage. The next uh, important case and important uh, function and role of the uh, scientific educational communities are the rethinking of culture heritage. What do I mean here is that the university now is not only uh, telling us about the history, history of art, history of culture, culture, but also they are rethinking the uh, our um, the memory, the uh, the heritage and the culture uh, history, and uh, it's also very uh, actual now in um, times of uh, decolon decolonial practices, which are very very actual for Ukraine. And here I would like to mention two. Small examples. First one is the uh, which was made for uh, in uh, May last year during the conference uh, in in Kiev, and uh, there was the uh, data uh, given by the uh, librarian director of the library from Mariupol, so from the city which was completely uh, completely destroyed, and uh, she uh, she told she provided the data that uh, one of the first target of the invaders was to destroy and all the Ukrainian books, all the books in Ukrainian, all the books of Ukrainian authors, which states, and also, also all the monuments that do not correspond to imperial uh, policy um, of, of Russia, uh, which also tells us about the uh, importance to provide the data that it's also, it's very important. It's a war for, uh, it's a war of cultural values. It's a, it's a, it's a war of, two completely different cultural identities. And the next thing, uh, which also um, uh, presents the same opinion, was the guest lecture of the professor um, of archaeology of University of Notre Dame, U.S., Van Kuit, in October 2023. He gave a lecture in Kiev, at Kiev University, the Shachetka Kiev University of um, National University of Kiev. And uh, I, will also, I will even... Um, uh, saying his own words that what we see in Ukraine is an attempt to erase history, culture, and heritage. It's a war for culture. So it was his, his second visit to Ukraine, and uh, he says that he is very important mission as a uh, as a um, scientist, as a um, 
quite uh, popular uh, um, educational leader is to tell uh, also uh, in, in US, in Europe, and with guest lecturers about the uh, very important questions in Ukraine, about looting culture heritage, about destruction of heritage, and about the, all the culture crimes committed by Russia. And finally, the third case and third function very important of the universities and educational communities is transferring the knowledge. So uh, here, it, because I think that university and scientific communities, networks, they have this unique knowledge, which they, they, uh, they can um, transfer and share. And uh, first one, uh, it's also the data for you uh, project, uh, which was launched by uh, different university in, in, uh, and organizations in Europe from Greece, uh, Latvia, Ukraine, and uh, Slovenia. And one of the main tasks of this project is to increase the level of knowledge and skills uh, for teachers and students of institutions of higher education, especially in the field of cultural heritage preservation. And uh, it's also when it was a resolution uh, it, during the big international forum on the security of culture heritage, which was held last year in February, and it was led by the Maidan Museum in Kiev. Also, one of the main points of the resolution was, I will even read this, provision of quality education in the field of culture heritage preservation introduction of new culture specialities in higher educational institutions, as well as creation of professional networks of specialists for communication, exchange for experience and partnership. So it also tells about that uh, the crucial role that the educational scientific community plays now uh, during our uh, war for uh, and our battle uh, for culture. And uh, to uh, finish my presentation, I would like also to be back to the Agile philosophy. And my favorite saying from the Agile manifesto is that uh, people and cooperation are much more important than processes and tools. So here I uh, think I would like to strengthen the uh, my appreciation of the resilience, of resilience of Ukrainian educators, of Ukrainian um, representatives of scientific university communities and uh, say thank you to them, to, to, to the colleagues uh, for being on this uh, culture front uh, today and uh, also to say thank you to the uh, armed forces of Ukraine to have the possibility to make it all happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Darina, for your presentation.